This is the story of how a social media post led to a libel trial in the High Court. On one side is Colleen Rooney, TV presenter, columnist and wife of former England footballer Wayne Rooney. On the other side is Rebecca Vardy, former model, reality TV contestant and wife of Leicester City striker Jamie Vardy. And because of their husbands, their paths crossed. They both watched England at the Euros in 2016. This week, though, both women are in court at the start of a trial we're expecting to last a week. They're there because of what happened in October 2019. It was then that Colleen Rooney posted this on Instagram and Twitter. She wrote, For a few years now, someone I trusted to follow me on my personal Instagram account has been consistently informing the Sun newspaper of my private posts and stories. To try and prove this, I came up with an idea. I blocked everyone from viewing my Instagram stories except one account. Over the past five months, I posted a series of false stories to see if they made their way into the newspaper. And you know what? They did, she told us. These are the stories in The Sun that Colleen Rooney is referring to. One was about a flooded mansion during a storm. Another about talks to join Strictly Come Dancing. Another about travelling to Mexico to look into gender selection treatment. Colleen Rooney claimed these stories were plants to catch the source. And she finished her post saying, now I know for certain which account it's come from. It's Rebecca Vardy's account. That post went viral. The whole thing was labelled Wagatha Christie. And Rebecca Vardy was quick to respond. Rebecca Vardy posted a similar lengthy statement, uh, basically saying it wasn't true. She also said it's a shame that Colleen didn't call her, that if she'd known earlier about this, she could have maybe changed her password and see if that made any difference. Rebecca Vardy also tweeted, saying, I'm not being funny, but I don't need the money. What would I gain from selling stories on you? She's always been adamant. She didn't do it. Rebecca Vardy flat out denied being the leak from the off. She was quick to point out that a number of people had access to her social media accounts, not just her. Straight after the allegation, Rebecca Vardy spoke to the press. In an interview with The Mail, when asked if she'd ever argued with Colleen Rooney, she replied, that would be like arguing with a pigeon. You can tell it that you're right and it is wrong, but it's still going to mess in your hair. I paraphrased a little there. Rebecca Vardy also described a conversation they had. She told us, I said to Colleen, what on earth have you done? You've just annihilated me in public and hung me out to dry. The whole world hates me. And as this played out, people who knew them began to take sides. One uh, person who's come out in favour of Colleen is former WAG Danielle Lloyd. She posted a series of rat emojis under Colleen's Instagram post. We also heard from Boris Johnson's father, Stanley Johnson, who'd been on a reality TV show with Rebecca Vardy. He told her, we're all rooting for you. And then this is Chantal Heskey, the wife of former England footballer, Emil Heskey. Colleen's a very private person. So this must have been after months, well, years of her investigations, and she's narrowed it down to this one account. So why not go public? It might bring whoever it was out of the woodwork sooner. But Rebecca Vardy has always denied that she did this. And in early 2020, she talked about the toll the allegation was taking. I ended up with severe anxiety attacks. Um, I ended up in hospital three times. Um, and I had ended up with kidney stones. Four months later, she decided to act. Rebecca Vardy has now filed a claim for libel. She says she didn't leak anything. And she says she suffered a torrent of online abuse, ridicule and also threats to both herself and to her family. The first stage of the process came in November 2020. A preliminary hearing considered if Colleen Rooney's post had made a direct accusation against Rebecca Vardy. Here's David Silito again. The judge decided it was, and so, a victory for Rebecca Vardy and for Colleen Rooney, a cost of £22,913.50. There would be costs on the other side too. In another pre-trial hearing in July last year, Rebecca Vardy was ordered to pay £10,000. And as we move towards the trial, a third person became part of the story. Caroline Watt is Rebecca Vardy's agent. The Rooney team wanted to look at messages on her phone. But then they told us Miss Watt's phone had regrettably fallen into the North Sea after a boat she was on hit a wave. They added it was most unfortunate because it was only a short time after the court ordered that the phone should be specifically searched. And now, on day one of the trial, Colleen Rooney's team has gone further, alleging this was a deliberate and calculated campaign to dispose of evidence. Rebecca Vardy's lawyers say there is no such campaign of deletion. However, Caroline Watt remains a focus. That's because in written arguments, the Rooney team say a new Vardy statement suggests Ms Watt was the source, but claims that Mrs Vardy did not authorise or condone her. And so, if there was a leak from Colleen Rooney's account, there are three possibilities. 
as this media lawyer explains. One is that Rebecca Vardy did them. The other is that one of her team did them at her request. The third is that one of her team did them of their own initiative. Now, if it's the third, then Rebecca Vardy's OK, because it's not her fault. If it's one or two, she loses. That is what will be decided over the next seven days. And as the trial began, Colleen Rooney's lawyer spoke for many when saying, this whole court might just think, why on earth are we here? There are, as we've heard, a multitude of reasons. And on day one, Rebecca Vardy gave testimony. She was asked about her views on privacy and why she gave an interview in which she said the singer Peter Andre has the smallest trouser equipment I've ever seen. Now, Jim Watterson of The Guardian's been live tweeting proceedings, and on this he noted, Barrister David Sherbon asked Vardy, did you feel particularly strongly that the size of Andre's manhood should be made public? Vardy, arguing she was coerced into giving the interview, replies, it was something I was forced to say. The trial continues at the High Court through the week.